Hi, this is Di, and in a shocking turn of events, I'm on my way to the doctor I'm here with Jerry. But when we came around the corner for Seattle, this do you see the smoke? I don't know what it is. It's, it's very, like, it looks like smoke, it's very I can't light. Smell anything. It's a beautiful day, otherwise, sunny 89 degrees outside. Now I smell smoke, it smells like weed, though, <laughs> doesn't it? <laughs> is this is Seattle come to this? Now I see gray smoke up in there. See that big puff up there? Yeah, that's because people pulled up lawn chairs and are watching whatever's going on. Yeah, it's probably this car right here with their windows oh, rolled down. <gasps> oh no, something bad, like a car on fire. But it, I don't think it's on the road. I think it's below the road, maybe? It's on the road. Oh, it's no. right where we need to go, too. It's right where we need to go. It just must have happened because there's no oh, emergency the personnel. Everybody. everybody, look up. There's something going on here. There's no ambulances, no fire trucks, nothing. It looks like travel beans. Did they finally buy another van? <laughs> That's right where we're headed. Uh, the person out there is the guy who owns it. It's all the fire truck. Now this truck, he was barreling down on it. Feet. Take exit 167 from Mercer Street towards Seattle Center. I would love to. Yeah. I think I can be able to get around it. I don't know that for sure. We're trying. Such a thing. I'm not real thrilled about even driving by it. No. Yeah, maybe if you can get over our lane like they just did. You're just gonna barrel through. Oh, careful. There's the guy whose truck it is. He's got. I don't know what he has on that. nobody there yet it's very disturbing I think that is a situation where either you get by it in 10 minutes or you're gonna be there for three hours see how close we are to downtown what is this? well it's making this easier <laughs> there's less traffic there's less traffic everybody's slowed down on the freeway the appointment anyway she was lovely she got all of my attachments I sent her nine test results and appointment notes and all those things and she was happy with how my body's responding to the Weller egg medication and my numbers looked okay that I'm all right to keep taking it she said that if I ever need to take a break like I feel like I need a week off or whatever to just let them know and I can do that oh and that my doctor's retiring <laughs> Mind you, I've only seen him once to say, hey, I think I'm a candidate for Wellrig. And he was like, yeah, I think so. And then you see the ARNPs after that. 
well, now he's retiring and I will have a new doctor. How come being a patient is mostly just being in parking garages? You think it's about dealing with your health, but it's actually just all parking garages, huh, baby? I wish it was just parking garages. <laughs> I spent a lot of time in hospital rooms and waiting rooms and... Labs. Labs. <laughs> All cafeterias. That. I got poked twice. She didn't get it the first time on my blood work, which I could tell she wasn't because she just, she did things in random order and fumbled around too much. And I knew she was gonna, but she didn't really speak English. So I was like, oh, just know that she's gonna get it wrong the first time. She even asked for my left arm. If you ask for my left arm, you're not gonna get it because my left arm, that's not even up for grabs anymore. It's done, it's totaled. We'll find out how that accident is on the freeway. Everybody's talking about it in here. What kind? What kind of? Right there. Oh, it's right there. <laughs> oh my gosh, it's so close. Tow truck. Sorry. I don't know what their tanks were on there. There was there was the hazmat uh, logo uh, uh, square, but icon. I mean diamond, diamond diamonds yeah. on there, and I I couldn't read them because I saw them in the rear view. I didn't mm. notice them on my when I we were going around the vehicle. Yeah. But I looked in the rear view, I could see them. They were on the front of the vehicle, which I thought was weird. Yeah. Um, anyway, but I don't know what they were. I couldn't tell, and I don't have memory. Yeah. But then you overheard a conversation that said yep. they were nitrogen. Yep. So. That's what I heard. Then I heard there was something else. And the next conversation, no. everybody was talking about it. There's the fire. There's the fire engine. The ambulance. The guy was fine. Unless it exploded. Got him. He was still so far back. He got out of the way. He was actually trying to get off the freeway too, wasn't he? That's just a coincidence. Everybody's here. Exciting. So many fire engines. Yeah, it's burnt down. It's Is over it there. Oh, they let it burn it's, out. It's just gone. No the Boeing fire department's here. And a bunch of compression <laughs> compressed cylinders on it. <clears throat> Got some traffic. And I-5 southbound closed. Well, getting away from it was smart. It was just not maybe the way you did it. <laughs> well, I don't know what else yeah. you would do. What the other cars were doing. Well, they well were we just... had to go buy it. We, I mean, you, you had to go yeah. buy it. I didn't necessarily have to go right by it, but it was blocked. It was kind of blocking the exit. So I, I drove right by it. Yeah. Fast, very fast. Driving fast yeah. makes it safe, right? Well, I'm not hanging out by it. But I, I think we were uh, we were probably a, a minute or two at least away from explosions. Because when you get home, if you do YouTube and King Five, you can see it. 